Hey folks, in this video we are going to be looking at this 2002 E39 and changing out the oil pan gasket. Now initially I was going with the non-kosher route of cutting the gasket and sliding it in between the oil pan and the block itself and oh my gosh, it was so stinking tight and I was getting so frustrated I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do it the right way. I'm going to drop the subframe and lift the engine so that's exactly what we are going to be doing so let's get right on into it. All right, now the very first step, if you do not have a lift at your house, is to go ahead and jack up the vehicle. Now, if yours is lowered like mine, or say your jack just can't fit underneath the vehicle to jack it up, I brought mine in on a couple pieces of wood I used as a ramp, so I had a little bit more clearance as I slid the jack under. I jacked the front up, put an A-frame underneath on either side, and then I went to the rear, and I jacked it up, and then put an A-frame underneath. I also have wood there, just in case these A-frames want to shorten my lifespan. Okay, so I put this in another video, but I wanted to go ahead and do a quick clip of it here. Uh, you can see some of the oil beading there on that sway bar, and then it's also on the oil pan itself, and uh, it doesn't go very high on the block, obviously not anywhere below the uh, oil pan itself. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is wipe everything off down here, give it a nice little spray down, so that it's a clean area as I'm going to work on it. All right, so it is a 17 millimeter socket, so I'm gonna go ahead and crack that and let this all drain out. So you can see we got the oil flowing down and I've got my, my catch bucket way down here because what I would normally have uh, to cradle the bucket is, uh, it's got too big of a lip and it will not fit in here with how low this car is, but nonetheless, I'm going to let this sit for a few hours and just let all of that oil drain out and then I will be back. Next up, we want to take out the air box, and all it is is this one screw, it's a 10 mil, and then you have your mass airflow sensor, and then there are two vacuum lines that go on this elbow, and this one tension clip uh, that uses a flathead screwdriver that you can undo, and then just be careful as you're pulling it out, all of this rubber could be quite old if it's never been replaced, and you could break it, but you do have to tug just a little bit to get it popped off this elbow, and once you do, it should wiggle right out of place. Now the whole reason that we take the air box off is so that we can get to the dipstick uh, holding tube and that we can take it off and there's the bolt right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. We have to take that out and then pop it out of the oil pan itself so it can be removed. Now we want to remove the wheel, and it's pretty simple. You just have your five lug nuts holding it on. Uh, if yours is kind of like mine, which I'm guessing it will be, there's a little bit of corrosion on here, uh, and you can just tap it with a little rubber mallet. If it's really stuck on there, you can set your purse down and grab a wood block and hold it against the tire and then hit it with a hammer, and it should break that loose. But the whole reason we want to take that wheel off is so that we can remove the brake caliper. You can see I've got mine hanging from the shock up there, uh, but we want to remove the brake caliper and that's two 18 millimeter bolts and I'll show you those on the other side. Okay, so here we are on the right hand side. Again, remove the wheel. Here we have our brake caliper and it's two 18 millimeter bolts. So the first one, and they're both on the back. The first one is way down here on the bottom. And you can see that's the first one, so there's one there, and there is a washer on it as well. And the second one, okay, so the second bolt is right here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's right here, right on top. If you feel around, you'll see it. There's the brake dust nipple that's right here, and it's just to the right of it, right there. And the whole point of doing this is uh, to keep that brake line from stretching too much. So there's the brake line. Uh, and you don't want it to stretch too much. This caliper is really heavy, so have something here. If you can't hold it, have something to, to catch it when you do take it off. Uh, and then also you've, you have your wear sensor is right here. You don't want to stretch that one out too much. We'll be disconnecting it from the box over on this side, but the, uh, before you do that, you, you want to go ahead and remove the caliper. 
And again, once you remove it, uh, hang it up from the shock uh, with something you see here. I just have some chain. It just loops through the top of it uh, and then hooks back together, and it's it's holding it. But again, you know, this is this weighs a lot, so just be prepared for that. Okay, now I failed to mention this before or to really uh, specify it, um, but these are the brake uh, pad wear sensors, and they run to uh, the back part of the caliper. Um, but you just want to open up this little box and slide out these connectors. From what I can tell, you don't necessarily need to disconnect them, um, but just to pull them out of that box so that they have a little bit more room to move about as the subframe drops. And again, there's two on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. Okay, next up we are going to loosen the three 13 millimeter bolts. You can see them right here, one, two, three. And you're gonna do that with the power steering or the serpentine belt still on the power steering pulley. That is so there's some resistance against these bolts whenever you go do go to loosen them. Once you do that, we're gonna go upwards to the tensioner, uh, loosen the tensioner while simultaneously pulling off the belt, which you can see I've done here. This is allowing us to now remove all three of these 13 millimeter bolts and slide the pulley wheel off to get to the power steering pump. All right, so here's the pulley. I just got it off, and I used a little bit of WD-40 on it just so that I was... Uh, you know, able to wiggle it off a little bit easier. It's plastic, so I didn't want to break it. it. Took me about three minutes to wiggle it off with my fingers. Now, if we come up here, we can see exactly where it came from. Maybe okay, there it is, right there. Uh, boom, and you can see the bolt holes where the three 13 millimeters go. And if we move a little bit higher, there's the ratchet. Now that's used for the tensioner. And there's two tensioners on this. One is an eight millimeter uh, Allen, and the other is a 16 millimeter um, uh, socket. Now, at some point, I think mine were swapped out uh, as the belts were changed. Um, so I think the threads are the same, uh, but just note that those are the two sizes for the tensioners. All right, so now that we have the pulley off, it's two 13 millimeter bolts to remove the power steering pump and here's one of them and then the other one is on the other side there's a shadow cast over it so you can't see it but do not remove the torx bits uh, torx bit uh, screws just the 13 millimeter bolts okay so now we've got the power steering pump out you can see it's loose there uh, and I do want to note that one bolt is in fact longer than the other and the longer bolt goes towards the left front wheel so just don't forget that when going to put it back in. Alright so next up we are going to take a bolt off of the power steering line. So the power steering line uh, it runs down towards this is the left front wheel over here it runs down and then it makes a 180 degree turn and it comes back this way. Now it's just a little clamp uh, that holds it there and there's a singular little nut on the bottom uh, that you might be able to see if I can get my finger in uh, there right there we're gonna take that off and so it's gonna help drop the power steering lines giving us a lot more clearance to the oil pan which is right here all right so now you can see I have this line uh, removed and it's just kinda of dangling down here uh, and that was a 10 millimeter bolt that was on the end of that clamp holding that on so I screwed it back on uh, so I don't lose it now you are good to remove the oil pan, which you can see here. Now, I would recommend draining it at the beginning of the job uh, because it is a never-ending reservoir of oil. You can see it all uh, ponded down here in the pan that has literally just been sitting there uh, as it was draining. Um, but the longer you can let it sit there uh, and let the oil drain out, the better. It'll be a little bit less messy for you. Um, but anyway, that is the next step. All right, now next you're going to want to disconnect this oil, uh, I guess it's a level sensor. That's on the bottom side of the oil pan, and it's just a little uh, push connect that you can take out on the bottom side here. 
All right, so next up is going to be the actual engine mounts. We're going to want to loosen them from the bottom first, and you can kind of see it. There's a lot of shadows down here, um, but you see how crispy and crunchy and pancaked that engine mount is? Well, since you're already down here, you already have to loosen these bolts. You already have to lift up the engine. You might as well get some new motor mounts. That's what I've done. Um, and you're just going to swap them in there, It'll just help the vehicle uh, be a little bit quieter and help any sort of uh, engine rattling that you'll have. Uh, so let's go ahead and remove these two bottom bolts, there's one on either side of the vehicle. Okay, so we got our two 16 millimeter nuts off the underside of the engine. And there's a 20 millimeter uh, or 13 16, so you can also use that socket on the driver's side up top. And then there's another 16 mil up top on the passenger side. You're gonna have to use some extensions as well as a, a universal joint uh, in order to really break that one free. Also hit it with some WD-40 or something just to loosen it up a little bit. Um, now that we have them all removed though, we can jack up the engine. But what I have found is that the engine will not go up high enough to remove the motor mounts, the threadings on them. Um, without the fan hitting the fan shroud. So now we have to remove the fan. You just need a simple set of tools. It's roughly like $17 if you want to go and buy it online. Some people make their own. Some people will use uh, very clever strategies. I tried some of the clever strategies and just about broke my back leaning over the engine bay. So I just spent the $17. It's a hell of a lot easier. Um, and then I slapped them on there and I just broke that free. So now I'm going to remove both the fan and the fan shroud all in one unit as the fan shroud is not two pieces. Remove all of that so we can lift up the engine and then hold it up with this engine brace down here. Um, and that way we can remove the motor mounts. And once that is all lifted out of the way, we will also have a lot more access to drop down that subframe and wiggle out that oil pan. All right, now in here I have the 32 millimeter wrench on the big nut of the fan. It's way down in there. It's not really focusing all that well. But then down here we have the tool to hold uh, the nuts that are actually on the clutch of it. Uh, so you have to hold those stable while hitting it with the 32 millimeter really quick, and it'll break it loose. And I'm going to loosen it all the way and pull it all the way out. Okay, so here we are. We've got the jack lined up, uh, lifting it from the oil pan. Now, don't lift it way too much or you're going to cause a lot of stress on the transmission, um, but I lifted it enough to where the motor mounts uh, are now accessible and we should be able to get them out. I'll show you from the top side here. We have the engine. Here's the hoist. Now, this is in tension now, so I can take out the jack and it should be just fine. Here's one of the motor mounts I want to show you. It's right there in the middle of the screen. My light is on it right there. That's one of them. You can see the threading is completely out now, so that one should come out. And then there's one over here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this one. It's way down in there. Um, way down in there. But that one I think is stuck to the stuck to the engine, so we might have to jimmy that one out of there, but no problem nonetheless. Anyway, we should be good now to pull those motor mounts and then pull the jack out and just have it supported by the support bar right here and we can lower the subframe down. Alrighty, I am currently in the process of changing out the oil pan gasket on this E39, but right now I am stuck with the subframe. I've done tons of research on trying to figure out what exactly six bolts I need to find and I couldn't find two of them. Well, there was a bunch of plastic covering them up, so you have to take out some of the, some of the uh, plastic that guards the underside of the vehicle, um, and so it was difficult to find, but I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'll also incorporate this into my oil pan gasket video, um, but this is just going to be a quick little how-to on if you're wanting to drop down the subframe on an E39. Okay, so now we are underneath the vehicle, trying to wedge myself back in here. Um, but here you can see, this is the back end of the car, and here is the frame rail coming up right here. Um, and you have to remove this plastic guarding that would normally be sitting like this uh, to get down in order to get this little tiny piece of plastic off. Let me see if I can hold it up for you guys. There's a little piece of plastic that hangs on um, something like, let me see if I can do this better. 
All right, so now we are underneath the vehicle. This here is the frame rail, and this is the plastic underneath. You can see I'm coming through the wheel well right here. And what you have to do is take off a series of, um, I think they were like eight millimeter uh, little bolts here with a little tiny washer on them. Those are on the front side and some are on the side here. Then you also have a bunch of the uh, classic BMW plastic clips um, that are holding it on on the other side. You also have some clips in the um, wheel liner right here that you have to take out. You don't have to take them all out. You can if you want to. It doesn't matter. Uh, but really what we're going for is to get this one little piece of plastic out and all it takes is a little plastic clip in the back and a plastic clip uh, that comes in the front that goes through the inner um, wheel liner and it sits right in here something like this and it's tucked back in there but we have to take this out to get this bolt right here that you can see and now this connects the subframe to the actual frame so we've got one bolt here and then we got two bolts over back behind my head so I'll show you those two now Okay, so again, there is the first bolt right there, and that's the back end of the vehicle. Here is our wheel well. Um, you can see here's the back of the brake, um, and uh, here here's one of the plastic clips right here. I know it's very difficult to see. It's very tight down here. But then as we move forward, so again, here's the frame right right here, and we run into our first bolt right here let's see if you guys can see that right in here um, is our first bolt and then our second one if we keep going is right here and there's our second bolt so we have to take uh, these three out and it's symmetrical on the other side so we'll have a total of six so again one back here coming off the the back end of the subframe and then we got one let me see if I can get a better angle of it here one right there and then one more right up here and now you want to be careful when you take these out because the subframe will just drop down so have something supporting it uh, so you don't get crushed down here okay so I'm going to try and show you here on the passenger side uh, before I remove everything so here is uh, the inner wheel liner right and you've got you don't, you don't have to take out this screw but you've got um, a little 8 mil here, here, and then it looks as if someone's just put a little screw in. It's kind of hard to see, but you can take that out as well. And that's really all you have to take out here. Now as we go under, this is what we're wanting to take off right here, this plastic piece. And uh, you can see that there's a, uh, whew, that's a big old spider. All right, so the spider's now gone. Uh, as I was saying, this is the panel that we want to remove, or at least uh, take off so it can hang down and we can get the piece of plastic in here out. Uh, on the outside here, you can see we've got a plastic clip, plastic clip right here, and another one right here, and this one right here, and that should be all you really need to drop this thing down. Now as we slide underneath, <sighs> see if I can show you guys here so the bolt that we need to get off is right back underneath here so you got here's part of the uh, the, the wheel liner right here so we got to take off this bolt here and this bolt here and those will drop down um, and then a little piece of plastic is is right in in here that we need to take out Okay, so now we got all this plastic hanging down enough so we can get to this screw right here if it'll focus in. We can take that out and pull this little piece of plastic out. Alright, so here you go. Here is the piece that you pull on out. And let's see if I can show you the bolt. There's the bolt that it you uncover. Alright, now we've got all the bolts out. Here's the three from the driver's side. Notice how rusted this one is that was the toughest one to get out I definitely needed a little bit of help from this breaker bar that I've got here or I just slide it over the end of my ratchet and help to get a little bit more leverage but realize you might need to do that uh, now I've got the jack in place holding the subframe up and I've got my uh, 
deep well 12 millimeter socket. I'm going to go ahead and loosen these coilovers and drop them down. There's going to be three on each side. Um, and then I will uh, drop down the jack and the subframe should lower. So I just removed all six of the nuts on either side and the suspension has dropped down. Now I would recommend, now that I've, I've dropped it, I would recommend tying off the top of the spring um, or your coilovers, wh whatever it is that you have, uh, whether it's stock suspension or not, tie it off to the hole so when it drops down it doesn't drop really quick. Also be sure you have your brakes held up. You don't want to put a lot of stress on the brake line. Um, so just make sure it's, it's, it's held up and, and be careful when you go to drop it down. Don't have anybody underneath the vehicle um, that could potentially get crushed. Don't have anything underneath the brake calipers as they come down. Um, just, just be careful as you go, um, just so you don't hurt anybody uh, or yourself. All right, now we can very slowly lower down the subframe. Fingers crossed here. Oh boy. What are we hung up on now? All right, now I think I finally got it. It's been a lot of wiggling to get this thing freed, but let's see if we slowly lower it down. Okay, see we're hung up a little bit on the driver's side maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. Hold on, let's see what we can do about that. Okay, at this point, you can see we have the subframe down. I, something's hung up on the left-hand side over here. I'm not sure what, but I'm going to go ahead and try and get the oil pan out. We might have to remove the sway bar. I've seen other people have, have taken it out. Um, yeah, you can see that this is all cockeyed, so I need to check that out. I, I have it, the jack underneath it right now just to support it because I'm not sure what's hanging it up. I'm gonna give it a look and then try and pull the oil pan out. Okay, so now the subframe is dropped down. You can see it is quite a mess. We got power steering lines hanging down. Uh, we're touching the ground over here. Nonetheless, I got the oil pan out, but what was causing the problem was the steering rack. That's why it wasn't dropping down all the way. So you've got the six bolts that you have to undo and before you lower it, go ahead and remove two 16 millimeter uh, bolts that go into the steering rack. This is going to uh, take the steering rack off of the subframe so you can drop it as low as possible. And that's what you want. You want as low as possible so you do not have to finagle that oil pan out. So you're going to have uh, one on the right side and one on the left side. And this is where they go. I'm going to move in for you. So here you can see the steering rack going across. All right, and then here's the subframe. And uh, you got a bolt. Let me see if I can move this light. You know, yeah, you can see the hole where the bolt goes. And then it goes straight up through the steering rack. Obviously, they would be connected, and the nut goes on top. On this side, since there was so much stress on it, let me see if I can move. You see the screw still hanging out right there? Yeah, all I could get was the nut off, and uh, so it's under some stress at the moment. I couldn't get the bolt out, so if the bolt was out, the steering rack would be completely disconnected from the subframe, and this right-hand side, or the uh, the driver's side, actually, would be touching the ground. It would make this even easier, and then it would help you uh, when you go to line this thing back up to put it back up. So I'm going to have some problems doing that, but... Nonetheless, the oil pan is out, and to remove the subframe, you just need those six bolts uh, to be removed and the two bolts on the steering rack, or at least one of them, but realize that you're going to have some stress on the steering rack. Okay, so now you can see I've got the uh, oil pan outside here, and I've just been taking uh, the abrasive side of the sponge over here to clean the outside of it. I've been spraying it down uh, with some Simple Green and a little bit of Super Strength Cleaner um, just to get some of the grime off of the outside of it, and then flip it over so you can see on the inside here. <clears throat> on the inside, it's fairly clean. I wiped out a little bit of the grime, uh, so the oil's going to sit on this side, though. So you can see, you can see the gunk 
build up on this side. But overall, for 192,000 miles, you know, this is really clean. It seems as if all the owners have taken pretty good care of it from what I know. Um, so I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more and I'll probably let it sit overnight and then I'll put it back in to make sure that there's no moisture in here as I don't wanna lock that into the engine um, and then, you know, I'll have moisture in the oil. Okay, so I've brought the oil pan back inside, cleaned it up a good bit now. I'm just kind of wiping off the outside. Um, and I do want to mention, so whenever you're doing this job, you're wanting to get a new O-ring for the dipstick uh, tube that goes down here. And it's not super easy to get the O-ring out, uh, or it's not super noticeable if there's a bunch of gunk in there. So what you're wanting to do is reach in with maybe a pick or something. Uh, mine came out with just a you know sticking a paper towel in there, and it pulled it back up. But this is the O-ring right here. And it's really gummy uh, when you pull it out. There's going to be a lot of uh, residue and gunk on there. So what I did is I went by with this little pick tool right here. Um, let's see if I can focus that in. I went by with this, and I just kind of cleaned out the edge uh, of all the gunk that was in there. So I just went went around in there. Not too hard. You don't want to scratch up the the metal, um, if, if that's harder metal uh, than this aluminum here. Um, but just enough to get some of the gunk out. Obviously, you don't want any sort of goo uh, residue inside of here. Uh, you know, this is going to be what's lubricating the engine. Um, but nonetheless, I do want to mention that that O-ring needs to come out. Alrighty, now I have a side-by-side -side comparison of our new motor mount and our old ones. This is a BMW motor mount. I'm not sure when it was put in there. It could be the original um, or maybe a replacement, say at 100,000 miles would be my guess. It doesn't seem too banged up. It definitely does have some cracking down here as does the passenger side. Uh, but this new one, it looks really good. Um, and I'm excited to put that in, see if it really makes much of a difference. Nonetheless, I'll be happy to know that a new motor mount is in there. But I want to show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of the old and the new and just show you guys how easy it was, uh, you know, once you drop down the subframe, how easy it is to, to put this in there. All right, so here on the driver's side, there is the mounting position. And if you look on these motor mounts, let me see, there's like a little dimple here. Um, and you just line that up with the hole. Um, and you just drop her on in. Obviously, I'll take the little rubber bits off. Okay, I need to do that first. All right, so now as we go to put this bad boy in, uh, obviously with the subframe lowered, it's really easy. There you can see the little mounting bit. And you see there's two holes, and one is for the, uh, let me see, one is for the little nipple or bump, dimple on the bottom, and then you obviously have the threaded bit. And it just drops down in there like that and it lines itself up, and then as we lift this frame up, it'll, uh, uh, you might have to align it a little bit, but it should go in to the hole up on that side, um, and then you can bolt it down. So we can do that on the passenger side as well. All right, so now it's the next day. The oil pan is dry. I'm about to lay a little bit of uh, Permatex on each corner just to seal it off, and what I found was actually uh, as I was cleaning the underside of the engine where this is going to mount up, that there was silicone that is put on there from the factory, so that is a good deal. But nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and put it on each corner, and then I'm going to stick it underneath there and start feeding in and just hand tightening some of the bolts so it can hold itself. All right, guys, now we've got our new... Uh, gasket in, oil pan is in, the 20 some odd bolts are in. What I did was stick a couple bolts in the front side and then I stuck one of the three external torques uh, that are on the back side of the pan. I stuck those in and that held up the back half of the oil pan. So that's a nice helpful tip. That way you're not having to hold it up while trying to screw in uh, or, or finger tighten in a couple of the bolts just to hold the pan. Then I went by with, uh, I think it was about five foot pounds worth of torque. 
Um, it was about 50 inch pounds, 60 inch pounds of torque that I went by with and just tightened them all up. And then I went by two times with the 89 inch pounds or seven and a half foot pounds of torque. And I torqued all the bolts except for there was two on uh, this the driver's side that I couldn't reach um, with the, the um, torque wrench. So I just tightened them up as I felt uh, was was good and then the external torques on the back I also tighten those up I didn't torque them to whatever their spec is but I tighten those up and those should be good to go so now we've got the new gasket in a little bit of um, permatex on each corner everything is torqued I've got the um, the oil pan bolt is in that's very important and then I also put the new o-ring in for the dipstick tube um, and I have that already seated in so next step is to get the subframe here realigned. I'm gonna put the steering rack bolt in. I'm gonna jack it up, put the steering rack bolt back in, and then start lining up the subframe so that we can hoist it back up. All right, now at this point, I have the subframe pretty much bolted in. Uh, all the bolts are in, they just need to be tightened up to spec. Uh, but I wanted to give a little bit of advice as it goes. Up. So you want to wait to bolt in the steering rack as it lines itself up as you jack the subframe back up. So jack the subframe back up and then bolt the steering rack back together. Now as you are jacking the subframe up, I would recommend getting a separate jack if you have one um, or slowly lifting the brake calipers up and I'll show you what I mean here. So as you jack it up to get some of the tension off, you want to go ahead and get the calipers uh, along with um, the control arms and everything uh, lifted back up so that you can get the top of the shock tower or the top of the shock back up to the top of the shock tower. So you can stick those nuts on the top and that relieves some of the tension. Now, obviously you'll want to remember to torque all of these down, but if you can get even the jack out of your car, so here's the jack out of my forerunner and just stick it underneath um, the, the, the brake caliper or underneath uh, the control arm and jack it up and that's going to relieve some of the tension and help you when you're lining up the subframe and that's just one less thing that you have to worry about as it's going up. Now I also took the fan and I slid it back into the fan shroud. I never ended up taking the fan shroud all the way out. I was able to take the fan out uh, no problem. Um, with the, with the wiggle room that I had after loosening the fan shroud and lifting it up, and I slid the fan back in, and I've tightened it up, and then I weaseled uh, the serpentine belt around the fan, and now it is just sitting in there. So here, here it is right here, but the power steering pump still needs to go on, and so when we come down here, uh, you can go ahead and slap the power steering pump, which is, let me see if I can show it. So there's the power steering pump right there, and you can see the uh, the uh, pulley is not on there, and the belt is just hanging down here as it will go around the power steering pump. But I have it bolted in. You can actually bolt it in from the top of the engine down. The bolts are really easy to get in. Um, but you can do that as you are lifting up the subframe. You can do it either before uh, or, or halfway up or once it's already bolted in. It doesn't really matter all that much. So again, now at this point we have the steering rack bolts in on both sides and there's the nut on top. And that's a 16 mil. And then we have the six 18 millimeter subframe bolts. All of those are in, so three on the passenger side three on the driver's side and what I would recommend doing is right in the back back either on on the passenger side or the driver's side just stick the one bolt in so you can have um, at least one side bolted down it makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to move the subframe and line up the pin on the driver's side and then you'll also have a kind of a pin on the passenger side and then also remember your motor bounce um, when you go to put them in that they are lined up with uh, the mounting points on the engine which and see if I can show you guys that. Okay, so there's the motor mount. You can see, uh, let me see if I can think right there. That's the, that's the motor mount. That's the top part of the threading, uh, and that's going to go into the engine, and then you just want to make sure that it's lined up on the bottom. 
So it's easier to do with two people if you can, but you can do it with one. I'd recommend having a second jack, but you can do it with just the one. It just takes a little bit more time and alignment. All right, so now we have the brake calipers back on. Now it's just those two bolts that go on the back side, and they get torqued um, down to, I want to say it's like 80 uh, or maybe it's 110 newton meters. It's like 82 uh, foot pounds. And those get done and then remember to then also reconnect um, these are the ABS and brake sensor wires uh, and then you'll you'll clamp this uh, piece down which holds them let me sh shine the light in there so you can see uh, close that back up um, and then you're pretty much good to go on the brakes um, as long as everything is lined up and then also remember once you have that subframe lined up you can go ahead and put all the plastic that covers the um, that last back bolt and that's just going to be those plastic clips along with those eight millimeter um, little little screws right here these right here and then you're gonna have a series of these plastic clips so don't lose them when you take them off so with that all being done, the engine's now going to be lowered back down. Now note that you need to uh, take the jack and put it underneath the oil pan. Relieve the tension on the engine hoist and then you can take the hoist off of the engine uh, or the support bar off of the engine and then lower the engine down onto the engine mounts via the jack and you just need to make sure that it is aligned. Once that is done, the fan shroud can be put back into place. Okay, so we just dropped the engine back down again. You just have the jack to relieve the tension on the support bar. You can then slowly lower the engine down and just make sure that you do it onto uh, your, your engine mounts, whether you replace them or not. Just make sure that you have the mount threading slide through the engine on both sides. I doubt that you'll be able to see it on this side. Maybe so. Yeah, you can see it down there. And now we can go ahead and put on the bolts that go on top and then the bolts that go down below. Line up the belt and put the power steering pulley back on. All right, so now you can see the power steering pulley is back on. And the best way to do it is to put the pulley on and slowly put the bolts in just finger tight so at least they're in place then go ahead and wrap your belt all the way around make sure it is routed properly look up a diagram for your specific engine um, or just pay attention when you go to take it off route it around uh, and have it on all the pulleys except for the power steering pulley then what you'll go and do is you'll loosen the tensioner or you'll relieve that tension, right? And make sure you look up what it is for your vehicle. You'll relieve the tension and slide it over the power steering pulley. Now it's best to have two people. You can do it yourself. It's a bit more difficult. Um, but nonetheless, you want to slide it over the pull, uh, power steering pulley as the last one. Don't try and slide it over the tensioner. You can try and do it, uh, but this way was really simple. Obviously, after that, you can go ahead and put on um, the accessory belt over on this side. Again, it's really simple. You got your 16 millimeter uh, for the tensioner. You just loosen it and slide your belt back on. Okay, now once you have those belts on, I cannot stress the importance to get these um, coolant lines run properly coming down from that reservoir across the bottom of the fan shroud um, and just to make sure that all your connections are redone so you had a connection right here um, that this slides back into this holder and that you have all of your hoses into each respective clamp alright now we're on the home stretch okay so you can see I already have my air box back in and that's just a 12 millimeter bolt right in there, connecting a vacuum line, reconnecting these hose clamps um, right in here. There's two in the back depending on which one you loosened, um, but just make sure you tighten those up. Um, you'll have this 
all slide back in here. And then make sure you tighten down your dipstick. It's at 89 inch pounds or about seven and a half uh, foot pounds, but there's just one 13 millimeter bolt that holds it in. Also, remember that uh, o ring for the dipstick tube. Make sure that that is in. Obviously, you would not want to reach this step, um, but it is still, you could, you could still fix it. There's no problem. Uh, you could still fix it if you hadn't put it in yet. Um, and at this point, really, all we need to do, we've got the air box in, we've got the o ring for that in, and we've got our new belts in. The shroud is all back in place. If you took it out, remember that there is a little plastic clip here, uh, and there's another one on the other side. Remember that your reservoir right here, uh, you've got this all back in place, um, that, little, that little screw. You've got this little rubber strip. Make sure that that is laid back in there. Uh, we put a little bit of uh, lubrication onto it to make sure that it slid in there a little bit better and stuck in place. But other than that, you're pretty much good to go. Next up, we want to go ahead and put these uh, bad boys back on the vehicle and tighten down all the lugs to spec. Alright, as you can see, I've got the wheels back on and just for reference, it is 89 foot-pounds of torque per lug. Make sure you go in a star pattern. So really, the only thing left now to do is to fill up the vehicle with oil and then to also put the under tray back on. I'm going to hold off on it. I want to drive the vehicle around and see if there is any oil leaking um, just to, to pay close attention. And then I'm also going to clean off the underside of the uh, under tray. Um, but then also we got to take it down off the jack. So let's go ahead and get it down onto the floor. Thank <laughs> you. 